going crazy and I want to show you another coin from my coin collection. Uh, today I have for you an eight reals. Uh, some people call this the eight realis coin. Others say uh, eight pieces or eight bits, whereas others say a pillar dollar. And personally, I like to call this a pillar dollar. It doesn't really matter which of those you refer to this coin as. Uh, you're talking about the same coin regardless of, again, which one of those you you um, call this particular coin. It all means the same thing. Um, you can see there this is graded by NGC and it was graded VF20, so very fine 20. That makes this about a three to four hundred dollar coin in that particular grade. And this is one of those coins that I'm really happy that I own. And the reason I'm happy that I own this coin is, well, first and foremost, it's a three to four hundred dollar coin that is a little bit of a pricey pricier coin um, but at the same token it's well worth the money uh, because it was such an influential coin on the world um, this coin the pillar dollar was traded on every continent on this globe except for Antarctica it was actually considered legal tender even though it was minted by the Spanish government this was considered legal tender here in the United States up until 1857 when they outlawed its use as uh, legal tender. And that's how influential and widespread this particular uh, denomination and coin uh, coinage was um, series. And it's a, it's a really neat coin. It was uh, minted, again, by the Spanish government at Spanish colonies. And this one right here, you can see the M with the circle right above it. On There's one both on the left side of the coin and the right side of the coin. That is actually referring to the, that's a mint mark, and that's referring to the Mexico City Mint. So you know that this particular pillar dollar was minted in Mexico City in 1770. Uh, there are, well, let's start breaking down the front of the coin here, because it's actually really, well-designed coin, if you ask me. Uh, there are two pillars there. Those are referred to as the Pillars of Hercules. There's two banners, and those banners look a lot like dollar signs. And they... I read an article somewhere where they believe that the dollar symbol was derived from the way that the pillars and the banners wrap around there. If you look, it looks just like a dollar symbol. And they believe that's where the dollar sign was derived from. But uh, the text there that's been inscribed on those banners uh, uh, says more beyond. And then you have two worlds there. One represents the old world. One represents the new world, all governed by the Spanish crown. And then the text there at the top is both are one. So the old world and the new world, again, is one. And again, governed by the Spanish crown there. This is one of the first coins that implemented a security feature. So you can kind of see, you really can't see because of the holder, but you can see there's a little bit of a design on the edge of this coin. And, you know, back in the day, people used to take a um, uh, some type of a device and they would rub a little bit of silver off of the edges of coins. And so this actually implemented a... Um, system, a design there, a security feature. So if somebody was to tamper with the edges of the coin, you would know that maybe the coin um, it doesn't weigh as much as it should uh, to make it truly eight reels. So I thought that that's pretty cool as well. Um, on the back here, it gets even more elaborate in its design. You can see I don't know what to call this. I know there's a name for it, but you know I'm not that technical. Um, but we'll call it the coat of arms, the Spanish coat of arms there. And if you actually, what's interesting, if you look at uh, the quarter that came out last year, one of the national park quarters, you'll see the same design on uh, the back of the one of the national park quarters. I forget which one. Um, I don't have any nearby or else I would would actually hold on maybe I do all right I I found one I had the 
a book of proofs next to me. So this it's close. It's not the same thing, but you'll see the same kind of uh, lion, which is very, very similar. And then you'll see a very similar building there. You can see the building, the building. And so when I saw this, I immediately thought of the pillar dollar. When I saw this on the quarter this year, the San Antonio mission. And you can see why. I mean, it would be, um, and even the cross. I mean, you can see kind of a, if I had to take a guess, I'd say that's also sort of uh, derived from the pillar dollar. But uh, this coin, this quarter from 2019, the San Antonio missions quarter, was definitely derived from, or in, I shouldn't say derived, it was influenced by uh, the Spanish and, and the pillar dollar. Um, not the same, but very similar in some ways. And then, uh, let's see, let's get back to the coin. You can see it says Spain in Spanish up here. And then you've got the king's name, the third. And then I'm not sure, I gotta look this up again. I'm not sure what, I think this is part of the king's name right here, but I'm not sure what this little bit says. Uh, that right there stands for eight reala. So like we have a quarter, which uh, technically came about because uh, you would take one of these and you'd split this up into eight pieces and that would be eight re reals. So you know, what you'd have one reel, two reel, three reel, four reel reels. And uh, quarter was uh, one of those reels. So kind of fascinating, but uh, eight reels. So think of it like a quarter, dime, nickel, uh, eight reels. And then you had the engraver's um, initials there. So that's a guy who actually stamped out this coin in Mexico City. And you can actually get, I mean, you can really do a lot of in-depth research on these coins, you can actually go online and look up uh, the records and, and determine who uh, whose name this actually is. Uh, I mean, the records are so, they kept great records, I guess, back then because uh, they're there. You can find out exactly who minted this coin in Mexico City uh, in 1770. So this is one of those really cool coins, and if you can afford to get one, even if it's a low quality coin or even a higher quality coin, this is just really a neat coin. If you guys look up pillar dollars, you'll see that uh, it's a nice big coin. I mean, this is, you can see here's a, a quarter. I wish I didn't, wish I had one that wasn't in a flip here, but a quarter doesn't even, I mean, this is uh, even larger than a half dollar. I do have a half dollar here and you can see much larger than even a half dollar. Um, but I don't think it's as large as, it might be about the same size, actually. It's actually a little smaller than an Ike dollar, but not, not by very much. Um, not by very much, but this is a really, really cool coin to have. And if you guys can afford one, I would encourage you to get one. Um, on another note, I've never shown you guys this. Uh, let me see if I can make sure that there's nothing... My desk is a mess right now. I got a lot of things I got to put away. I uh, just picked up these a couple weeks ago, these Samsung Galaxy Buds. And man, these are sure very, very nice. I got to charge them. I'm glad I opened them. But uh, these are very, very nice earbuds. And then I've got some vintage stuff, some vintage little figurines and some proof sets and but anyway, check this out. This is what I did to my desk. I've got a really cool desk here. I mean, it's not a cool desk. It's a desk that I enjoy. And uh, I've got a bunch of old antiques and stuff up there and has this really nice hutch. I, I got it from a business that I had. And, you know, there's some marks on it. You can see there's some, it's not perfect as far as cosmetic, but overall it's not bad. It really looks great. Um, it has a bulletin board here and um, a light underneath and it's just a really nice desk and I, I enjoy it and I decided I wanted something that would really make it look really neat so I started to hot glue these pennies onto uh, the side here I'm going to do it on the opposite side as well and really I wish I would have done this on the desktop I might actually spend some time taking these pennies off and then putting it on the desktop. I think that would be cooler. 
uh, now that I see what it looks like on the wall. But uh, it's really a neat idea to be able to do this to furniture. If you guys haven't seen penny countertops, look them up on Google. They're super, super cool. And uh, something that that uh, I'm definitely going to, like I said, I'm probably going to take all these off and put them on the, the counter there. But I, I had never shown you guys that in a video, and I thought, you know, it's about time. It's been that way for several months now, and I thought it would be what a cool way to really make something look um, transform an old piece of furniture um but anyway kind of off topic there uh thank you guys for watching please like comment and subscribe i'm trying to get up to 500 subscribers seems nearly impossible been trying for months now so hopefully it happens one of these days but anyway thank you for watching and again please like comment or subscribe